Hello, and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen, and today I'm doing a remake of my calamine soap, and I'm using calamine powder that I got on Amazon. Uh, there's a link below in the description box for my Amazon store. It's in there. It is fabulous. Um, if I when I grew up in Wisconsin, uh, in the summertime we had these mosquitoes, and they were like helicopters, so big. Anyway, I would get covered in bug bites, and my mom would always put the pink lotion on me. Well, that was calamine lotion. So it's got different benefits and everything. I'm putting it in the soap today. This soap will make you clean, but uh, it makes a beautiful blushy color also. So calamine powder is going in there, and it will be replacing my kaolin clay. So we'll do colloidal oats and calamine powder for the fragrance let's talk about that I have this white tea and ginger type I think it's a bath and body dupe I'm not it's a dupe of something smells fabulous and I got great reviews so that is going to be the fragrance today I just thought it sounded just really soothing to go with the calamine powder I'll be doing an aloe vera juice for the lye solution today uh, and I'll bring you along as I make that I like to do a 50-50 split of distilled water and aloe vera juice. You can do 100% aloe vera juice if you want. I like to do a 50-50 split. It behaves like water. So I'll bring you along as I do that. Uh, juice is different than gel. So <laughs> we'll talk about it when we get there. So right now I've got to get my hair pulled back and get all the equipment and everything ready to go to make this wonderful calamine aloe vera soap. All right, it's soap additives time. And so here is my colloidal oats. I'm gonna do two tablespoons of colloidal oats in here and my calamine powder. Running kind of low, I'm gonna to need to reorder this. Uh, I do four tablespoons of calamine powder. So this is a two tablespoon scoop. It's a coffee scoop. Most coffee scoops are two tablespoons and you can buy them like in the little kitchen gadget aisle at Walmart or wherever. So anyway, four tablespoons of calamine powder. It's gonna go in here. I'm gonna get this all blended up and let it absorb for a while as my aloe vera lye solution is cooling. Uh, and then we'll get to moving forward. There's no swirls in here. It's pretty simple, but it's full of goodness. So anyway, oh, let me show you real quick. On the top, after I do a scoopy top, I like to put some pink rock salt down just because it is so pretty and I think it really goes with the theme. So, all right, let's get this blended and we can get moving on. I have to apologize. I thought I hit the play button on my iPad here, which is what I film on when I made my lye solution and I didn't uh, bump it all the way. And so anyway, I had my gloves on and uh, anyway, I apologize. I missed the footage. So let me talk about my aloe vera lye solution and what's in here. I buy distilled water in gallon jugs and I buy my aloe vera juice in gallon jugs. I've gotten it at Target, I've gotten it at Walmart, you can get it on Amazon. Just make sure you get the uh, unflavored, you know, just plain aloe vera juice. And what I do is a 50-50 split of water and aloe. You can do 100% aloe also. It acts just like water for me. I never have a scorching issue. Um, so I keep those gallon jugs in my refrigerator down here in my studio. So they're nice and chilled. So I measure out my liquid. I put two tablespoons of sugar. Cane sugar is what I use. You can use white sugar. You don't have to use sugar at all. What sugar does in a lye solution is it's a lather booster. It really helps the bubbles and the lather in soap, and I just really like it. It's such a cheap additive, so I add it in there. It's a lather booster. So I dissolve the sugar in the liquids, then I put a little pinch of Tussa silk fibers in here, which again, you can totally omit. You don't need the silk fibers. I get asked a lot, what do the silk fibers do? They literally add a silky feel to the lather, the slip of the bar. It adds a glossiness to your bar when it's wet, and I think it makes the lather feel silky. So I snip up my Tussa silk fibers on top of the liquid that has the sugar dissolved, and then I pour my sodium hydroxide, which is my lye, over the top of the whole mess of it and stir, stir, stir until it's all dissolved. That's what's going on in here. <laughs> and then I let it sit and start to cool off and I will put in some sodium lactate. Sodium lactate helps with the unmolding. It helps harden the bar up quicker in a cold process. Again, you don't need it. It helps harden the bar up and so that's why I put it in there. I like to cool my lye solution down a little before I add it. Um, it just makes unmolding smoother the next day. So that's in there also. 
So that's what goes on in the Magic Pot. <laughs> all right, with all that said and done, I do have the fragrance is already in here. It's a very well-behaving fragrance. Smells so nice, very gentle and beautiful smelling. So let's get the lye solution in here, come up to a nice trace, and we'll get it poured into the mold. Because there's no swirls or, swirls or anything, it's pretty basic. Look at that beautiful blush color. Isn't that lovely? I will cover this tonight and let it go through gel phase. All right, I have been stick blending here for several minutes, so this white tea and ginger is a really well-behaving, slow-moving fragrance, and I barely have trace. I don't know if you can see it at all, it's, but you can barely see it's leaving little trails. And I'm gonna go ahead and pour this in the mold because quite frankly, I'm tired of blending it. <laughs> and it will firm up. We definitely have emulsion. We have a very light trace. So I'm gonna get it poured in the mold here. day and look at that beautiful blush color. I'm so happy with how this turns out. Every time I make it, there's just something really soothing about it. I love the color. I love the fragrance. It's all just super nice. So we're going to get in here, get cutting this. Uh, there's no swirls or anything, but let's get to it. It's time to cut into these lovely, simple loaves. And I'm gonna cut with the salt side down to help prevent drag marks through the soap. If you have little bits of things on top and the wire goes through it, sometimes it can cause drag marks. Not a big deal, it's just an aesthetic thing. But if you can put your bits on the down facing one, it reduces them. So there's not gonna be a lot to see here. It's all one color and look at that. Just simple beauty, so nice. Now I did uh, cover this last night with a blanket in the mold. It went through gel phase and these are just so simple. <laughs> but to me, that's beautiful. Cause you know, it's all about the calamine and the wonderful, you know, white tea and ginger fragrance, which smells beautiful. It kind of complements the soothing whole theme here, I think. These just kind of look soothing to me. So there they are, not a lot going on. I am going to get these bars all cut up, let them sit for a few hours and let the surface area uh, sort of be exposed to the air and dry a little. I'll come back in a few hours and do the beveling and the stamping on these. And you know, all the good stuff that goes into making a bar of soap. I love all the details. So thank you so much for joining me today. Hope you enjoyed the video and have a really wonderful day.